What's up, everybody, and welcome to your favorite show, Fruta Extraña Televisión. I'm Izzy here with the Caliente segment with Dr. Charlie Ferrer. Welcome her to the show. Thank you. I haven't seen you since June, the, since the picnic. Bronx Pride picnic. Were you there? You were. Shame on you. Oh, it was so wonderful. It was great. So thanks yeah. to the Bronx Health Consortium for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm back today. Very excited. I got dressed up for you. Oh, thank you. So we, we also have a really cool celebrity that's going to hang out with us mm -hmm. and talk about a very exciting topic. Porn. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you both both surprise. I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. <laughs> I love well, porn. You know what's funny? I love porn too, actually. Mm -hmm. um, what's funny, I was reading an ar article that said that, you know, right now the whole technology, I'm kind of a dork in that way, like the Blu-ray versus HD DVD, okay. what's really going to help sort of consumers choose what to, technology to buy is what porn is made out of. And apparently, like, uh, Blu-ray is not giving licenses to porn developers hmm. because of the content, and which I have also found oh, out is why so VHS censorship. beat beta back in the day because of pornography. Mm -hmm. So porn... Because it was so easy to get it on VHS. Right, exactly. So, exactly. Uh, so yeah, today we are talking about pornography. Is it good? Is it bad? What is it? <laughs> what is it used for? And we have a great guest. And stick around and you'll meet him in just a second. Right. Welcome back. I wanted to introduce you guys to a new member of our family, Will Clark. Who Yay! Welcome, welcome. Who has been in the industry about 12 years. 12 years. And, uh, you know, he's done some great movies over time and worked with some great directors. Uh, and we wanted to bring him on, bring you on, to talk about pornography. What The question is, is it good? Is it bad? What and how it goes into relationships. Okay. How we can actually use it to enhance relationships. Well, I think one of the most exciting things about uh, porn, and I can really mainly speak about gay porn because that's the most thing that I've done and that's the most association that I have with the industry, um, is that, I mean, I think something that's very exciting about gay porn is it really inspires people. It gives people new, exciting ideas of what's erotic. Um, for example, like it's really easy to know, like, oh, I'm into baseball guys because you can like flip through the channels and you see the baseball guys and go, ooh, that's really hot. But you don't actually see the leather stuff or the SM stuff, you know, like on regular TV. So if you're watching porn and that's kind of turning, that's kind of turning you on, I think that's really a great place to explore and and it's also entertaining, of course. But you get to find out some new things about yourself. And there's some things that you may not be into. Um, and and let me hold you up oh. because I you, you said something that was really interesting was the fact that it allows you to explore. It allows you to see other things. And I think whether it's gay porn or straight porn or, or bi porn or, or whatever, because there's such a variety out there, is the fact that it allows you to be able to experiment. allows you to be able to see that it's not just you know one position or with one person or um, I know we talked earlier about the fact that you know you also have dress up oh yeah and you have absolutely. different things that you can do role-playing um, which is another great aspect of porn absolutely absolutely and uh, I was just gonna say there was um, and I know this can be kind of ooky for, for people so I'll, I'll be very as delicate as I can when I describe this but um, there was a certain um, part of SM play that in theory sounded very frightening to me and it had to do with um, sounds Mm -hmm. which is like the metal tube that you can put inside the urethra. Thank you very much for, for giving the, <laughs> clin for, for doing the, the clinic. The clinical piece, you know, inside. Yeah, because I was trying to think of like, okay, this is sort of a family show, so how am I going at this, you know? <laughs> well, we come on what at 11. What kind of family? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so our family is very open about sex. But like in, in theory, that always kind of scared me. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God. I, yeah. And I saw a Raging Stallion film, one of the early ones, uh, gosh, it must be at least five years ago now. And uh, it was a scene, and they did the whole thing, and it was very, it was very slow and erotic, and the guys were hot, and you know, and they did it. And I have to say that it was very exciting and erotic for me. And I would have never have thought that it was something that I'd be into. And I certainly haven't necessarily done it in my own life, but as far as a visual stimulus, I was really kind of. I was kind of intrigued that it was like, wow, this is really great. It, I think it was the thing is that it was done well, it was mm -hmm. filmed well, the guys were really excited and into it, and so they were doing it in a way that wasn't just haphazard and, and looked scary. It was like, oh wow, they know what they're doing, this is very safe in the sense of no mm -hmm. one's getting hurt 
in right. the end of the process. A good point that you were, that good. you can develop on is that if you're sort of new or just kind of shy about new things, you can turn the porn off and sort of absorb. Can I do that? You know, mm -hmm. and if you're in a relationship and you sort of need to like take it to that next level, the porn can yes. sort of take you step by step. And and if you're not comfortable talking about what you want. Then you can say, you can honey, um, here's a movie that I would like to show you. <laughs> because I've actually, I, I recommend in, in private practice, I recommend people go out and, and get porn. If you can't talk to your partner and say, you know, this is what I like, this is what I desire, then being able to go and, and look through porn and see something that turns you on and playing it with your partner and saying, wow, what do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just, I just think about all the different genres of porn, you know, like the military stuff, uh, sports stuff, locker room stuff, you know, daddies, mm -hmm. twinks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. I just don't, I think that it really opens up a world, especially if you've got uh, a company that is using a variety of different types of guys and you're kind of, you know, you're, you're with your partner and you're watching it or even if you're on your own, you're watching and you're like, oh, I would have never thought I was into that, but gosh, that guy's really attractive and, you know, you know, he's just above the legal age, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and or, you know, oh, I would have never thought I would be into a guy who was hot and hairy and tattooed, you know, to within an inch of his life, you know, and mm -hmm. 10 years older than me. So, I mean, it kind of goes both ways, and it's exactly. really an exciting revelation to make, you it's, know, as a, as a porn person, as, as well as just a human being yeah. who watches it occasionally, you know, to kind of get off. Let me ask you this, though. I, I mm -hmm. think it's kind of complicated because when you talk about a woman's perspective of pornography, then it's the issue of, oh, you know, you're... Um, What's, I'm, I'm losing the term. Objectifying. Objectifying, Objectifying right. the woman. Where I think for men, it's like men are very visual, they're very sexual, and they can take it and say, that's hot, I want to do that. But for a woman, it's got to be more of a fine line. Well, there's different areas in and porn. Why? There's different areas in porn, and I don't want to get into the is it good, is it not, is it objectifying. I know when I watch male porn, um, you, and you classify it as gay porn, I classify it as just male porn because I enjoy seeing um, men play together. I enjoy seeing, you know, men in bondage. Too. Yeah. So it's, it's the idea of, you know, are you objectifying the person that's in the movie? So mm -hmm. not just the woman, but also the man. Because well, in my position, I would be objectifying the man. The man. <laughs> you know? And, so I have a great, and I have a great brief story about it's that. It's different. When I, first went, when I first started in the industry, and it, for me, it was sort of like a, oh, well, this would be goofy and silly. I, I'll go make a porn. Like, you know, that would be like, I can't believe I'm going to do this. And I would have never okay. thought of doing it. But I was go-go dancing here in New York. And uh, the promoter that was doing the nights that I was working for suggested I, I you know, do some gay porn. He thought that might be kind of fun for me. And I was really like, no one's going to hire me, you know, whatever. And I went to San Francisco on a vacation, and I went to Hot House, and, uh, and I meet with, you know, Stephen Scarborough, who's the head of the company, and he's like, you know, like, well, we have to see your penis, you know. And, and is it true that they, like, check you out and, and size this, you? This and is what I'm going to say. Is oh, that, okay. you know, his, Sorry. He measures up, I can tell you his, that. His boy, thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you. Let me see. You're welcome. Um, uh, the, oh, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> so his kind of everybody clapped. Well, we well, saw well, that <laughs> it was wiped out. His sensor. Yeah, right. Me. Um, so his partner at the time, Craig, who was his partner in the business and as well as his partner in life, um, said like, okay, well, we're going to take you into the to the other room and you can you know get yourself together. And Craig was so nice, very just gorgeous guy. He'd been an occasional model and uh, just you know really like just gorgeous, you know, and he's like, well, we need you to, you know, put on your pants and get hard. And of course, you're in this very sexual situation, even though you're in the middle of an office, but you're still in the middle of a sexual situation. So you like, you immediately go, bing, and you're there. And, and he goes to me, he's like, well, I don't want you to think that we're objectifying you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sort of like, well, but isn't that kind of the point? Here, isn't that, right? isn't that part of the fantasy of choosing or wanting to do this is that this is kind of a, an opportunity and an, uh, to kind of be objectified in, in a way that I'm not in my normal life or I wasn't at, certainly at that point in my life. And I know that's kind of maybe seems shallow, shallow or superficial or something, but I have to tell you that that was part of the, wow, this is kind of cool. Like the look, just like